Wow, what a playoff edition of high school highlights. Now, we've shown Jersey Village all season long, but not nearly enough people fully recognize Falcons start of the night Friday perfect at 11-0. They have their hands full against Tompkins. Adam Winkler has a wrap from Pridgen Stadium. In advance of last night's Falcons versus Falcons matchup, I did a little preparation, you know, like any respectable journalist. I spent some time on birdwatchinghq.com. That's where I learned that here in Texas, we've got five types of falcons. Who knew? And in fact, the peregrine falcon, well, it preys on other birds. And last night, the Jersey Village Falcons took on the Tompkins Falcons, and only one would survive in advance to the next round of the playoffs. Tompkins enters the game with a 10 and one record. Jersey Village, its best season in three decades. Check out this play early. Adam Tran to Jersey Village's Josh Nunez. Incredible concentration for the grab. First half though, not about Jersey Village's hands. It's about Tompkins' hands. In the defensive secondary, three straight second quarter drives result in interceptions. This one by Cody Chapman, one of his two on the night. Look at the Tompkins sideline. All those snacks ready for halftime. So much Chex Mix. But before you even get to halftime, the Falcons gobble up points. Cole Francis to Colin Marshall. 21-yard touchdown at the horn. It's 21-7 Tompkins at halftime. You know that lunar eclipse Friday morning was cool? Well, it had nothing on the coverage we see from the Tompkins defense. They intercept six passes on the game, and the offense, well, it does the rest. These Falcons get the best of the Jersey Village Falcons. Final score, 42-14. It's crazy. Um, just staying over top, breaking on balls, uh, reading the quarterback. That's all we had to do, and we, we did the job. Is this the best this defense has played all year? Uh, the best we play right now, but we're not done yet. We're really happy for the kids and the coaches, all the ones that put all the work in. Great community support tonight. Bye-bye, come out here. Next up for Tompkins, a date with North Shore. Reporting from Bridgen Stadium, I'm Adam Winkler, ABC 13 Eyewitness Sports. Speaking of, last week, Clear Springs talked about setting a new standard. This time around, the degree of difficulty through the roof against North Shore. When you think about Clear Springs, you think about Noah Thomas and the passing game. But right now, it is Kai Woods through a gaping hole, sprinting into the end zone. Woods and Clear Springs lead at 6 0. 10 win North Shore comes right back. Xavier Owens Jr. got a bust out of the pack. He's in there. He is out of there into the end zone for the score. Just before halftime, North Shore driving. Clear Springs holds here on fourth down. Well done. But all North Shore down the stretch. 41 13 is the final. We're going to roll on with a task of seed to Dickinson. A pair of nine win teams more than good enough to make deep postseason runs. Early going, all Dickinson. Gators started the work with their ground game. John Solomon, great blocking up front. Spring Solomon, nice run here, sets up a short touchdown for the Gators. Second quarter, more from Dickinson. Their star quarterback, Luke Martin, 14 nothing. Gators on top. They make it look easy. And the defense doing its part as well with the interception coming up from Layden Roke. But it's all a task of seed late. They just don't give up. And they went on a field goal in the final seconds, 22-21. A task of seed. Klein Oak going to work, trying to pull off a big upset against Westfield. Klein Oak's quarterback, Preston Hatter, keeps scores for the Panthers. But you can't fool Anthony Holmes Jr. all night long. The man is a game wrecker. Now the Westfield offense gets cranked up. Cardell Williams to Dejon Palomo all alone into the end zone. A little bit later, Dequarius Shug Calhoun scores on the handoff. Westfield impressive again, 34 to 14. We'll continue with Spring and Klein Kane. This one turns into an offensive showcase. Spring quarterback Bishop Davenport to Joey Russell Jr. Break that tackle and turn this into one of the runs of the season. Stiff arm here, stay in bounds. You can't tackle him unless he finds the track. Great run there. Klein Kane tries to answer, but Spring's defense has done this all season long, not just the strip, but the strip and the score from Bruce Davis. Back and forth all night, Spring escapes 56 to 53. Montgomery and Port Natchez Groves, the Bears with one of the plays of the night. Look at their quarterback, Brock Bolfing to Justin Herman. How good is this catch right in the corner of the end zone, inbounds for six? Later on the ground, Jalen Washington for Montgomery. Offensive fireworks in this one as well. Port Natchez Groves wins it 49 to 42. On to another incredible matchup. Pair of nine win team, Shadow Creek, C.E. King. Everybody knows it's coming from C.E. King and Jarrell Wembley, but knowing it, 
and stopping it. You know how that goes. Wembley 70 yards plus for the touchdown. Shadow Creek comes right back with Tyler Burton, but King still leads this thing 19 to 7. C.E. King adds to their advantage before the electric return from the Sharks, Jaquan West. Look at him go, but C.E. King advances 52-34. Last stop, College Park and Bridgeland. Cavaliers rally with Ty Buckman to Cody Mladenka. Drag defenders into the end zone, cutting Bridgeland's advantage to 28-21. But on the next play from scrimmage, Bridgeland superstar Connor Wegman makes another one of those plays. You can see why the A&M recruit is compared to Johnny Manziel here and there. 89 yards, Bridgeland advances 35-28. to What an incredible night on high school highlights. Congratulations to all of our playoff teams, particularly the ones who now advance to play high school football in the state of Texas into the week of Thanksgiving. Have a great weekend, everybody.